Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Guess what? Today is Halloween. <laughs> Getting ready for trick or treat and having a monster mash party. So on and so forth. <laughs> so, for this particular Halloween, I'm going to review a brand new horror film that just came out recently. In fact, it just came out on Blu ray and DVD this week. It's called Mandy. Yes, Mandy. It's, a, it's the latest film by director Panos Cosmatos, the, the son of the late great George P. Cosmatos, yeah, the same director that gave us films like Tombstone, you know, Rambo First Blood Part Two, as well as uh, For Unknown Origin. Cobra and Leviathan come to mind. Yeah, but Panels, on the other hand, is a visionary director and it really shows that it takes a lot of time and effort to, t to do a, a material with a mix of uh, psychedelic uh, colors and try to create an action horror film like never before yeah and this is also a revenge picture too yeah I mean already this year we had three revenge pictures so far with this being one of them we had the remake of Death Wish which it's pretty forgettable pointless but it did have its moments that's the one with Bruce Willis and the other one is Upgrade yeah, with Logan Marshall Green, which had a very good concept, only suffers from a bad ending, but still. And out of all these three films, Manny's a whole lot better. For one thing, sure, the film is slow paced. I mean, it's a two hour film, but it's the perfect pacing that they had to go for. And it's also, um, it makes the movie even more special because at least they didn't go for a downbeat ending. And at least it took the risk to do so. I mean, it, it's very brutal too. I mean, there's a lot of brutal violence in this movie that you'll never forget. And that's what I love about it. And the fact that Nicolas Cage gave us a wonderful performance in his entire career. It's good because um, it's hard to believe that he's in a horror film that's way better than The Wicker Man back in 2006. That was a shitty remake that he did. Sadly, he takes the blame for that. In fact, this movie could have been made in that particular year anyway. Because I swear to God, this movie would definitely slash The Wicker Man into pieces. I mean, it does also play itself like a slasher film, too. But a good slasher film. Just like all the other good slasher films we had in the 80s. Even 90s for that matter. And, of course, even the 70s. But we also had some bad ones, too. It also had the late uh, composer Joanne Johansson, who was the same guy who, who did the score for a few of the uh, Denise Bonu films like Prisoners, Arrival, and Sicario. So this is a dedication to him. Yeah, it's really sad because he did create us uh, a wonderful score for this movie too. Yeah. It's amazing and Elijah Wood is also one of the producers for this movie too. Yes, actor Elijah Wood. So I had to say, you know, kudos for him to actually come up with something this unique. Yeah. Wow. Also, Andrea uh, Riseborough gives a wonderful performance too, and Linus Roach, even Bill Duke. Yes, Bill Duke from Predator is in this. I love that. Anyway, it is a movie about uh, a man who has a girlfriend 
was an artist until suddenly you know, a satanic cult had kidnapped them until he finally gets his revenge on the guys who not only trapped him but also responsible for killing the, his girlfriend. So there you go. But anyway, let's get to the review. Starts once again Nicholas Cage, Andrea Riseboro, Linus Roach from the movie uh, Wins the Dove and Sub Letters has been in. Yeah, Bill Duke, uh, Richard Brake, yeah, Bill Duke, you have a Predator, Commando, one others. Richard Brake, Ned Dennehy, Owen Foray, with Haley Sawell, Line Pillet, Clemence uh, Burnett, Alexis Jomont, and Stephen Fraser. It's written by Panos Cosmatos, along with Aaron Stewart uh, on. Panos also created the story. And it's directed by, once again, Panos Cosmatos. The movie begins um, set at Shadow Mountains in 1983. We meet a logger named Red Miller, who's played by Nicolas Cage, who lives with his girlfriend, who's an artist, she's very good at it, named Mandy Bloom, who's played by Andrea Weisburu. They both live in a cabin near Crystal Lake. Yeah, there's sort of a resemblance to you know, the Friday the 13th movies, but this is a whole different story. Uh, Manny also works as a day job as a cashier at a nearby gas station. So, you know, while Red is just working so hard um, you know, during the day shift of, of as a logger and working with all the guys. So anyway, she does do a lot of um, fantasy arts and Wed actually admires her greatly. So they definitely live a quiet and reclusive life together having their conversations about their behavior, hints of all the past and psychological hardships that they were going for. I mean, we also learned that Red is an alcoholic and he was recovering. But Manny also had a traumatic childhood experience. So there you go. But that is until Manny suddenly walks past a band that's carrying the Children of the New Dawn, which is a hippie cult, yeah, a very satanic cult, that's being led by Jeremiah Sand, who's played by Linus Roach. He was struck by Manny's charm and suddenly orders um, his brother Swan to kidnap her, yeah, along with uh, Red. Yeah, with the help of the Black Skulls, yeah, the, a very demonic uh, biker gang that has a taste of human flesh and and uh, LSD to join in. Yeah, it's a drug that they use that really causes all these hallucinations and everything. So during the night, Swan drives out to the lake just to summon the Black Skulls. So they came in. They were getting ready to kidnap both of them, and they trapped them inside their, their own house. We also learned that uh, Jeremiah Sand was a failed musician, so, so afterwards, um, two female members uh, from the cult uh, joined in. They actually injected her with LSD. Yeah, they actually put one in her eye, and then they used a bug to inject it in her neck and that's where she started to uh, have all these uh, crazy psychedelic uh, hallucinations here and this is where he, she begins to spot uh, Jeremiah and uh, where he plays uh, a, a tune that he did uh, when he was a musician and this is where he gave a speech a very uh, crazy speech that he did and this is where, afterwards, just right in front of Red, who's, who's being the, tied up with uh, barbed wire, yeah, between his uh, 
arms and his uh, mouth. Right in front of him, they're ready to set her on fire, all wrapped up in a bag. And this was uh, just after uh, this was just after Jeremiah just took out a dagger and, and stabbed him in the kidneys or part of his ab here. While well, he was wearing that uh, tiger shirt, also stripped uh, his pants too. He hired uh, Sister Lucy to actually threaten him to to have her shoot herself right in front of him you know, by using a gun that actually set up all the bullets, but the gun was jammed. So then they killed Mandy. They set her on fire. And you definitely see Red's pain right there. So then he finally escapes. And he got himself loose. He ran all the way back to his house. Already in pain. In agony. You know, he actually fell asleep. He had some nightmares. All of which were animated sequences of, of Mandy. And then uh, he got up. He went to the bathroom. He, he grabbed a bottle of vodka. He started uh, shrieking in agony and, and pain, filled with rage, so he had to drink, drink all of that, even healed his wounds. So the best way to, to stop these guys was to grab some weapons uh, that's being hidden down to, uh, to Carter's uh, mobile home. And Carter, of course, is played by Bill Duke. He explains to uh, Red that that the Black Skulls, you know, they just come around, are part of a group of couriers for a drug manufacturer who were disturbed by a batch of LSD. They also murdered people too. So then um, Red decided to take all of his weapons, you know, such as the um, the crossbow and even creates a tiger sharp battle axe so that way he'll be able to slice them one by one so first he had to go after the black skulls who started uh, trapping them um, who's, who already appeared uh, he actually ran over one which causes his uh, his truck to flip over yeah, I got knocked down unconscious until another black skull uh, took him, kidnapped him, and trapped him inside uh, one of the one of that cellar. Yeah, he actually kills him, um, even though he actually uh, rips off his shirt while he was already trapped, already handcuffed to one one side to the other. Uh, yeah, and, and got trapped by putting one of those uh, sharp needles inside his hand and yes he even says that's my favorite shirt <laughs> so yes he finally um, killed the guy and just dumped him all the way down into uh, the hole so now he continues to go after all the other uh, black skulls inside the room <laughs> Still screams, uh, that's my favorite shirt! And just slice them and dice them with, yeah, with the battle axe. <laughs> and he continues to go on trying to find where the children of the New Dawn are. So he, he suddenly meets uh, a drug manufacturer who just let out a tiger from the cage. And he tells them that they wronged him, so now he begins to explain where they are. So that's where he continues to to kill all of them. Yes, but only spared uh, Sister Lucy's life, because she doesn't deserve that. It's not her fault. And until he finally gets to uh, Jeremiah. And this is where he crushes his skull. Really good, too. <laughs> So now, his mission is finally complete, so now he's all alone, he still thinks about Mandy, 
underneath uh, the dreams that he has. Even though he won't be able to see her again. At least, you know, things turn out for the better for him now. So, that's the movie. Yeah, it's a giveaway, but it's okay. I just wanted to talk a little more. I really love it. Um, I, I'm so amazed how awesome, brutal, and psychedelic this movie look. I mean, I love the fact that they use magenta and violet colors to put in for all these uh, drug hallucinations. I mean, as you see it, I mean, the voices start to change a bit, like they start to go a bit deeper underneath the drug. So I love how they did that. Um, they did manage to do that uh, during the beginning of the film, too, where we get to see how she felt when she went back to the all of her nightmares that she had. But she even explains about all that, and then she even spotted a... Uh, she spotted like a dead... Um, like a dead animal uh, all the way near the forest, so... I think it was... Uh, I think it was called Starlings, though, yeah. Because he even explains about the Starlings. The, the score was just amazing. It's just sad that the composer passed away because he would have continued to do more. But, but I know this had to happen, but... The score was totally memorable. I think it, it definitely uh, sets the mood straight. It is a slow-paced movie. It takes some time to get to it, but that's okay. Um, but anyway, Nicolas Cage was, this is definitely one of his best performances in a long time. In fact, I think it's right up there with his, his performances in movies like Moonstruck, Leaving Las Vegas, which he won an Oscar for, and even movies like uh, Con Air. I did love Face Off, too, so he was good. And he's been in a lot of good stuff, too, uh, even in the 80s and 90s that I love, like Belly Girl. And yes, even for his uh, <laughs> crazy exterior that he does, I mean, he always goes completely nuts in movies like Vampire's Kiss and uh, <laughs> all these other movies. But yes, he, he went for that. I mean, there's even a scene where he did use some cocaine to make him go completely insane. <laughs> But that's because, you know, he's you know, he's up, he's going after all these guys who did this to her, to Mandy. It's just amazing that he finally did a wonderful job with this film. Uh, Linus Roach, I mean, yes, this is another, uh, this is another fine performance from him, which, yes, this is the character that you really want to hate so bad. I mean, he's a disgusting human being. I mean, he's coming from a religious cult. He was even naked, too. Yeah, they even showed him his shalong in that particular scene when, yeah, when he was giving that speech uh, to Mandy. And I find it interesting, too, because when they show a close-up of his face, it suddenly cross-dissolves into Mandy. And I didn't realize that, too. I guess underneath the drug, it really does do that. Um, but that was really amazing. Um, so, and it was also good to see Bill Duke in the movie, even though it's only a small role, but it's, it's interesting to see uh, how he explains who these guys are. So it was a good performance. Um, yes, the, again, the violence were brutal. Has a lot of kills, a lot of blood and gore all the way, and having their heads cut off and, and slashed and... Yeah, it's, there's even a scene where he took out one of the the black skulls. He with his uh, battle axe, he stabs him and then in, into his mouth, and all that blood starts squirt all over his face. I, I was like, wow, a lot of brutality right there. And, and he even took out that one guy, uh, Brother Swan. He put it straight into his mouth, and and it starts to squirt all that blood. I mean, wow, they they really did a good job here with. The, the practical effects. Uh, so yeah, you can tell that's practical effects. You don't see any CGI blood anywhere. I also love that moment where they had a battle duel with the chainsaw 
you know, Red had the small chainsaw, well, the other guy had the long chainsaw, so, <laughs> so it's almost like a sword fight right there. And so he actually grabbed the, uh, the chain, wrapped him up on his neck, and then went straight into the, the big long uh, chainsaw. And it really uh, cut him up really good too, like it just continues to, with all this blood start to splat out. Wow. See, it just has it all. Um, I wish this movie had got a wide release, though. I mean, I know it had a, a limited release, plus a VDR, a VOD, yeah, Video on Demand. Um, it, did ask, it did premiere it on the Sundance Film Festival uh, back in January 19 of 2018, but it did came out on September 14 of this year. So, yeah, this would have done so well. But that's another example why... You know, they're not giving these films a chance. But thank goodness, it's now has a Blu-ray release and, and a DVD release so, and even a digital copy. So you'll finally get a chance to check it out for yourself. Um, so yes, uh, highly recommend this movie. Definitely a better horror film this year. Right up there with Summer of 84, which I just saw recently. And I that too was another indie horror film that's... It's also a mystery and suspense that doesn't get much attention either. It also has a Blu-ray release, but it's a BDR. Um, I think the DVD is just a regular DVD, but they could have done better. Oh well, uh, I'll pick it up someday too. Um, but yes, um, check out Mandy. It's definitely the best horror film I've seen all year. Thank goodness we finally got a good movie. And this is the perfect film for Halloween, too, since, since now we're in Halloween. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that's Mandy, and I give the film five stars. A solid five star right there. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and have a happy and safe Halloween. I'll see you later. Bye.